we're, we're now in the middle of the biggest training area of the British Army. This is the Salisbury Plain training area in the heart of Wiltshire in southern England. Um, this is 38,000 hectares of unspoilt training area and it's got wonderful archaeology from quite early prehistory up into the monuments of the First and Second World Wars. And we're standing in one of those. We're standing in an area that would have been very familiar to Canadian service persons from 1914 because this is the site of Sling Camp. Um, by the winter of 1914 there are up to 33,000 Canadians who were training here prior to going over to France and Belgium and this would have been quite an emotional place for them in, in 14 because they'd have been sat in tents in what was quite a miserable winter, very wet, very cold, on places like the Bustard, at West Down Camps and here at Sling. There are so many photos of Canadians marching past Stonehenge that they've probably done as much prehistory as me in you know, the years 1914 to 15. And, and just that tangible link to a person, I mean, touching a tree carving left behind by someone who carved it and died only a year later on the Western Front, that's, a, that's a, quite a powerful thing. And they've left their traces um, throughout this landscape. Wherever we go really on Salisbury Plain, there's a trace somewhere of something Canadian, be it a tree carving, be it a gravestone, or a trench they practiced in prior to going over to what was a pretty visceral experience. And they were suffering casualties pretty early on, and these aren't casualties like they experienced at, uh, at places like Vimy Ridge or Beaumont Hamill. These are um, altogether stranger. Perhaps Percy Sawyer is a, is a good case in point. Um, down in Tillshead Cemetery, there's uh, three rather poignant little Canadian graves there. And uh, Sawyer is one of the, the first, in fact, I think he's the second Canadian casualty from coming over to the UK. And, and he's actually kicked to death by a horse. His uh, first um, medical attention given to him on site after the accident was by a chap called John McRae, who I'm sure many of you are familiar with in the fact that he is the, the author of the, the, the world famous war poem in Flanders Fields. Your heritage, heritage of another nation that we in the UK really do feel obliged and quite rightly to look after. Same with the New Zealand and Australian um, relics of the Great War because it's a, a very important campaign from a, from a whole Commonwealth perspective.